Here's 10 features that you need to know about to run your Airbnb business. Let's jump into the platform and teach you how to be an Airbnb host. Welcome back Airbnb family, my name is Sean. You know me, if you don't know me yet, um, I have about 56 properties on the platform and growing. We're adding 35 more over the next six weeks. It's gonna be a big project. We're also launching our course in a few weeks. Very busy, but before I get too busy to give you any more good information, hopefully that never slows down, I wanted to walk you through some uh, platform features that I think every Airbnb host needs to know about. Some of these are advanced, uh, some of these are basic. So this video is pretty much for everybody. If you don't have an Airbnb listing yet, index this video because you're gonna wanna know this stuff because there's some stuff that you have to do immediately upon creating your account and publishing your first listing that you need to change, that it's kinda not obvious stuff. Now some of this stuff will help you uh, as professional hosts with multiple listings, optimize and make more money. That's what we're here for, right? So the first one I wanna tell you about, number one is Airbnb has a new section called accessibility features. I actually spoke to Airbnb and the representative for this campaign, um, they wanted me to do a video on this and we're gonna do a separate video dedicated to accessibility. And essentially what it is, is Airbnb is trying to increase the amount of inventory available for people who are disabled. And she also wanted me to tell you, do not ever use the word handicapped in your listing. Right? So it's not handicap accessible, it's disabled accessible. That's a big thing for Airbnb, they want me to let you know. So there's three levels of accessibility for a home. The first one being that the doorway is a certain width wide and that there's no step entry to your home, stuff like that, no step entry to the bedroom and bathroom. And they're going to make you take photos and add photo proof that your listing meets these accessibility requirements for you to kind of level up. What's good about this though, is in some cities, there is a 400% increase of demand as opposed to current supply. So if you can meet some of these accessi accessibility bars, even that first level of accessibility, the amount of demand for that category will go up drastically and you'll get a lot more bookings for that. So that's one that just jump on immediately. If you have a ranch style home and you can have no step access into the home, I think you're gonna win right away. So this is the obligatory please like and please subscribe by the end of the video. You don't have to like and subscribe right now, but I assure you by the end of these 10 features, you're probably going to forget to subscribe. So if you wanna see more content like this, hit the button now um, and there's a notification bell. I'll send you a push notification when we do more content. So um, yeah, thanks, let's jump in. Number two is going to be something that you need to adjust after you create your listing. When you're on your phone and you're going to create your listing, it's gonna say when, it's gonna ask you when can somebody book? You're gonna put it a same day as late as 10 p.m. on your phone. It's the latest somebody can like list or book. So that means from 10 p.m. to midnight, your listing actually blocks off. If you do it on a desktop, I think it allows you to do it until 11. It's only after you publish your listing and then go back in to your availability settings can you switch it to on the desktop only, same day, to midnight that day. So you have to get on a desktop and do this and it will allow you to basically make it that somebody at 11.59 p.m. can book your property. Number three is another feature that you need to change after you've set up your property. This is called your internal name. In order to have an internal name, just like having a multi-calendar or having the custom like nightly rate discounts, being able to discount like two day stays or three day stays, you need to have at least six listings. Once you have that certain number of listings, you get extra features unlocked and one of the ones that most people don't know about is the internal name and helps you organize all your listings because if you have a team member or co-host that's managing your account and you have 20 listings and people are sending messages, you want that person when reading the messages to be able to go, oh, this is apartment 2020 or something like that at this one, what, this one building. So you, in your internal name, you can put the apartment number and the building name and maybe even a city code if you have multiple cities and you create this naming system so your assistants can be reading somebody's message and not actually have to look for the listing, they can just kind of go into your internal name that's showing in the message thread and answer all those questions with the context. It's a big help. Number four is another thing that you need to do after you publish your listing. So this one's kind of cool because we're using the pricing settings in a way that you don't commonly use them. So if you go to your listing and you go to pricings and the extra charges, you're gonna see that you can add a cleaning fee. We all know that I don't think that you should put too high of a cleaning fee. There's bad um, consequences to having an inflated cleaning fee. We talk about that in another video. Then you can also add like security deposit or not. And I don't recommend having a security deposit because it only scares off people from booking and it doesn't actually give you a collection advantage. But 
there's gonna be um, a price for extra guests and weekends and stuff like that. So you have your weekend price and then your per guest price. Now, I don't have this strategy where you have two guests and then it's like $30 per person after two. That's not why we use this. If my home can have four guests or have 10 guests, I price my listing, my base rate, as if I'm expecting that full group to book, right? So if my listing can host 10 people, I'll put it at $350 or $400 a night. I won't put it at $100 a night for two people and then $40 per person after. I don't do that scaling thing. But what we will do is set it that if your listing can occupy 10 people, set your rate, your base rate at like 400 or whatever, then take it and put for every person after 10, it's going to be $35 or $40 a person. What this allows you to do, if somebody throws a party where they're not supposed to be in your home and there's like 30 or 40 people, you can then go in um, to, to pretty much Airbnb support and say this person had extra people and they owe me $35 per person that showed up at the party. So you'll also need like a camera and you'll need proof that, the, that they threw a party with that many people and there's multiple ways to do this. But if you can prove that they violated your occupancy, that adding that into your prices gives you extra room to tell Airbnb to charge those guests. Number five is a cool little feature that you'll find in your calendar. So you need to get out of the multi calendar and you need to look at your like a one listing calendar, like one that a calendar that looks normal. The multi calendar is kind of like the side scroll into the future thing. Um, look at so click on one if you have multi calendar and drill down to a single listing. On the right side of the listing, it's going to say more ways to earn money. I believe is what it says at the top. And it's gonna give you tips and it's gonna tell you turn smart, smart pricing on and lower your price in accordance to like the prices that they want you to. Don't, okay, that, skip that. But keep clicking the little arrows that toggle the different things and sometimes you will find coupons where it will say make, make $185 for these two days by giving a 20% off coupon for Thursday and Friday, the 17th and 18th or something like that. And then you can add a coupon and those coupons will show up as like little dots on your calendar to show that there's a special offer for those dates. So you can find arbitrarily placed coupons in your pricing strategy just by paying attention to your calendars. It's kind of a reward for checking your calendars every day. By the way, if you check your calendar every day, by loading your calendar every day, you do get a little SEO boost, by the way. How about that? So number six, number six also has to do with your calendar in a way and in with your coupons in a way. A lot of people, when they create their first listing, they get the option of putting 20% off for the first three people that book, and I recommend you do not take that coupon option. The reason why is because somebody two months from now can book for two weeks, get your weekly discount, and get the 20% off, and they stack. So if you give 20% off for the week and 20% off because they're new, they got 40% off of retail on that on two week reservation two months into the future. The only reason why you want that discount is because you want somebody to book today or tomorrow and then give you a review right away. You want fast business and get fast reviews. You do not want to give somebody a 20% off coupon in the future. You also don't want to block your calendar to force people to book this week. So do not use that 20% off. Instead, discount today, tomorrow, or the next day, manually lowering those rates and give people a better rate that way and then somebody will book today. But let's say that you accidentally did the 20%. You didn't know any better. You can go into your calendar, click on those little blue dots or green dots and it'll pull up a tool tip above it. And that tool tip, you can go remove coupon and it will delete that 20% offer. So you can undo the mistake that you made when you first made your listing. Keep that in your back pocket because you never want that 20% off coupon. It's just not worth it. Number seven is about changing reservations. This is called an alteration on Airbnb. You have to submit an alteration request. To do this, you can, from the calendar, click on a reservation. It'll pull up the reservation details on the right. And then um, you can go to send them a message um, and it pulls up like their whole, their whole thing. Otherwise you can scroll down. I believe you can do this from the calendar still. Scroll down on their, on their like drilled down reservation information. And down below at the bottom, there should be a part where you could like block the user, change or cancel the reservation, and that's what you wanna click on. You're gonna click on change or cancel, and then you're going to change the reservation is your option. Now you can choose new dates for the reservation, you can change the number of guests, you can change the listing that you want them to stay at, the price that they pay, there's a lot of options to change. And you're going, like let's say somebody wants to extend their stay, this is when you would need to do this. Somebody's like, hey, could I stay an extra two days? You can go in and change the reservation, and this is going to create a request for them to accept 
your alteration request. Now, what you'll want to do though is check the price. Uh, Airbnb had some issues with this, where if you go to extend somebody's stay, it recalculates the rate that they're paying, and sometimes it charges them an arm and a leg more than it should, or it doesn't charge them enough. So for example, one thing we do is we lower the rate for the day after a reservation as part of our SEO strategy. So if somebody wants to alter their reservation, the rate for the day after their checkout or the day of checkout is usually too low for an extension. So we have to go in and man manually reprice it so that way it's the same rate as their daily rate because we're expecting somebody to book and then a combination of that booking and the cleaning fee would be what somebody else would pay. Well, when somebody extends a day, they don't pay another cleaning fee. So you really need to be careful with the prices when you do these alteration requests. Another thing to be careful for is somebody may send you an alteration request. Let's say they're supposed to be checking in two days from now for a couple days. They might send you an alteration request and move their reservation a month in the future. Don't accept it. They're basically trying to bypass your cancellation policy. Um, somebody might have a two month long reservation, which gives them a long term um, reservation with Airbnb, which has different cancellation rules. If you see somebody with a 28 day or longer reservation and they're trying to shorten it to less than 28 days, also don't accept it because they're trying to restructure the reservation to get out of Airbnb's terms for longer term stays. Because if somebody books your calendar like for three months in advance and then a few days before they arrive, they're trying to shorten that thing so that way they pay less money when they cancel, you're, you don't, don't do somebody that favor. Like they locked up your calendar, which means you could not get another person's reservation. So that's just some free advice. Has nothing to do with the 10 that I'm giving you. Number eight is about co-host types. Now, there are three different types of user permissions in the co-host hierarchy. So if you go into your listing all the way to the right, you're gonna see the co-host tab. You can invite a co-host by putting in their email, then that co-host can accept. They are a secondary co-host by default. If you made the account, you are the admin or the account owner. And then from there, um, you have secondary co-hosts. You can then promote a secondary co-host to be a primary co-host. And the difference here is the primary co-host becomes the face of the listing. So that way, if you wanna automate your business, the admin controls the money, and then the primary co-host becomes the customer facing account that gets all the phone calls and does all the communications and they never really even know that the admin account exists. And that's why promoting somebody up to primary is a good move. You can keep a secondary co-host on there if you want a little extra firepower, you want your cleaners to have access to the calendar, stuff like that. Now, Airbnb is moving away from the co-host association. I talked about this in a past video. Airbnb lost millions of dollars by accidentally paying co-hosts money that the admins should have got paid and they had to try to fix it and they ended up losing money in the process. And so they're moving on to something called Teams and we're gonna do a dedicated video to Teams. Right now Teams is an incomplete solution. It allows you though to choose what permissions people have. So you can have a, a team member who can just talk to guests or just change the calendar or do prices or just see the financials. So what they're working on is really cool, but the problem is, is one co-host can get linked to one team. That co-host can't be linked to multiple teams and that's so far like an operational flow problem, especially for our business. So be aware. Um, that there is a change coming. If you utilize co-hosts right now, be prepared to make the switch because uh, the co-host functionalities have been breaking. You might even have seen it. Like right now we have a problem with our co-hosts not being able to access listing information. It's like on and off. So number nine has to do with the message system. Let's say you're doing a res like a resolution and somebody owes you money. Like they checked out late and they have a $50 fee or they break something. If you know that you're going to need to collect money from a reservation, you should go to the right of them. Like when you go to the inbox on, on your platform, to the right of every message, to the right of every message is the ability to star or archive a message. By starring it, it creates its own high priority inbox that you can filter out all the unstarred messages. So the messages that you should be starring are reservations where something happened, if there's an incident, um, if there's a time where you know you're gonna need to collect more money from the guest, and then anytime that Airbnb contacts you, star those messages too, so that way you can get all the host support and high priority guest communication messages in a smaller inbox than like say having 8,000 messages in your inbox. The starring allows you to have this different navigation and it's super special. Um, use it, it'll save you a lot of time. We had to dig 20 pages once to find an Airbnb response that we needed for, for a payout and it was a mess. So stars will save you. Number 10, this is a funky one, but you need to know about it. The check-in guide. So on the desktop, you can create a check-in guide 
a check-in procedure, which is where you claim that somebody's gonna have a keypad, they're gonna have keys, they're gonna check in with concierge, etc. And you can create a sufficient check-in guide on the desktop computer, but if you want to create a check-in guide that has photos and has like this step-by-step, -step, let's go through it all, you have to do it from a, a mobile phone. And so once your listing is published, go to your mobile phone, go to the listing, and go to the, the check-in section, and it's gonna ask you to create a check-in guide. The check-in guide will have its own web link that you'll be able to send people. Three days before their check-in, they'll be able to see it, and they can basically have this step-by-step. -step. Here's what the garage looks like, here's what the concierge desk looks like, here's what the keys look like, here's what the lockbox looks like, and it makes it a lot easier for people to check in. If you're not managing your business through a, a cell phone and using this check-in guide, um, it's going to cost you stars on your check-in review and it might cost you your super host status if you're a super host. So um, get on the phone after you've published it and go to check in and go and do a step by step. And um, you can even create a folder for all your photos. This is a separate kind of little bonus for you too. Your desktop, you should have all of your listing photos that you've taken and then have all your check in guide photos that you've taken. If you ever need to alter or recreate a listing or something like that, you just have all of your assets in some folders for the future. So with that said, that's like 10.5, 12 different things that we've talked about, but enjoy these 10 features that you need to know about. Improve your business, make more money. If you have any questions, you know where to find me, which is in the comments. Make sure to like and subscribe to this video because it'll help the algorithm. People can go and find this video a little bit better as per usual. So thank you for watching Airbnb Automated and I will see you on the other side.